<clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. Starting off up close because this is the heavy hitter mech mod and this is the Switch all sort of taken apart in like, you know, an exploded view. It's a thing of beauty, this switch, let me tell you. So this is more or less how it's gonna go back together, but I wanna show you two things first. I wanna show you this is the contact, and this is your other contact. And when you press the button, this is what will be contacting each other on the inside. Traditionally, in mechs, at least in mechs from a few years ago, your contact would come up and hit the bottom of your battery. No longer, now it comes up, it's a little ball, goes in the little cup, ball, cup. We call this the cuppy ball contact. Actually, nobody calls it that. So we're going to start assembling this and putting it back together. This is kind of the main housing of your switch. The contact is going to drop down in here. You can see it's squared and squared. Square peg, square hole. Big spring sits right there in its little home. And then your switch, which is threaded, is going to sit in here and it's going to thread right into the bottom of that contact. And once you get the thread started, you can just screw it down because square peg, square hole, it's going to stay in place. Oh, I forgot to show you the locking mechanism. Damn it, man. This is pretty difficult to see. Kind of difficult to explain as well. I think Stan uh, did a better job of it, but there's a little ramp right here and a little hard stop so that your switch is square. When you spin it like this, it's going to hit that hard stop and then it won't fire and then you can twist it back so that it'll fit that groove and then it'll fire. It's just a really smart and simple way to put a little locking mechanism on the bottom of your switch. Just screw your copper button down just till it stops. It's going to line up with that little, you know, that little square that we saw. I'm actually going to get this started on here and then you press the switch in. Screw this down the rest of the way. Now, boom, you're good to go. You can lock it like this and it won't fire. You can unlock it like this, it'll fire. Contact coming up. Your cup drops down into this threading right here. And then you have another spring that goes right there. This is the part that's gonna be contacting your battery. So then you kind of drop this all together. You can kind of get this started with your fingers. That's all, just thread it down. Doesn't need to be crazy, just thread it down. So now you have spring loaded right here against your battery, spring loaded right here for your switch. And then as you can see, there's no threading on this switch. It's kind of this little uh, quick release guy, yeah? So the tabs are going to line up with the notches and then you twist it left or counterclockwise to lock it and clockwise to release it. I'm going to put this flat 28 millimeter cap on the top of this. A little bit of wear and tear kind of already happening from screwing down and unscrewing atomizers, but you can see it's engraved. Times Vape, Heavy Metal Vapor, Stan. Also Delrin sleeve on the inside. 21 700 can go inside because I just want to show you it takes a little bit of force You got to press because you're com compressing that spring Counterclockwise to lock it and when you turn this clockwise to unlock it or to pop this off It just wants to jump right off of there because of that spring-loaded contact right there boosh boosh on Boosh off. I think that's uh, that's just very, very cool. Now inside the box, you're going to get, you know, literature, spare O-rings, spare springs, and also a 26 millimeter little uh, top cap. You can kind of see this one has a bevel on it. The 28 millimeter is just straight flat. So, you know, depending on what you're using on top, you can change the top cap off, make it look a little bit more slick and clean. In fact, today I think we're going to be putting the Rye 1.2 in matte black on here so yeah I do want to use that 26 millimeter top real simple real nice threads all around fit and finish all around real nice now we can put this rye on here and it should look uh, should look pretty slick yeah not bad matte black on matte black that's pretty sick and vapors. As you can see, there's some venting across the top, some knurling across the top. Well, that, that, that doesn't really do anything. That's That moves zero. I think it's just there so that it matches kind of the knurling on the bottom. Give your switch a little twist, won't fire. Give your switch a little twist, will fire. It's got some facets in there and a little bit of a swoop to it just so it feels pretty nice in the hand doing the Cali Claw technique. Overall, man, it's a pretty slick looking mod. Now, uh, what we're going to do right now is get back out to normal view. We're going to do some pros and cons. We're going to vape it. I'll give you my final thoughts. 
So pros and cons for the heavy hitter mech mod. A lot of pros, not really a lot of cons. It's called the heavy hitter, and yeah, it's a heavy hitter. It hits nice and hard. This is a .13 dual alien on here. Single 21700 on the inside. Feels great hitting, nice and hard. The overall construction on it is beautiful. Beautifully machined. The switch is a little thing of beauty down there. Lock it, unlock it. It's nice and squishy. It's firm, but not too firm. The little swoop to it makes it feel real nice and comfortable in the hand. It's not like a crazy swoop to it. It only swoops to about 26 millimeters towards the narrowest part, and it only gets as wide as 27 and a half millimeters, so Ah, you know, a little swoop in there. Holding it in the nook of your thumb and finger, that's just, it feels so balanced there, it's kind of just where it wants to live. Really very much enjoying this mech mod. I like that there's a Delrin sleeve on the inside for some added safety. And like I said, I think this switch, this little quick release, boom. I think that's brilliant for, for swapping out your batteries. I almost said flopping out your batteries, which also, that still kind of works. Now, if we're gonna get to any cons about this, there's only really one con I have about it, and that is I wish that the switch, the quick release, was the opposite of what it is. Like I said, it's clockwise to release it and counterclockwise to secure it. I just wish it was reversed. Counterclockwise release, clockwise secure. That would have made more sense in my brain. It's not hard, you know, it's not hard to adapt to it. So let's get down to brass tacks with this thing. Vape budget hands. Are you gonna need your vape budget hands if you wanna check out the heavy hitter mech from Heavy Metal Vapor and Stan Tenacious TX Vapes. Kind of clicking around the internet, you can kind of find this for around seventy to seventy-five dollars. So it's a little bit pricey, but it's not like you know your vape budget hands aren't going to explode or anything like that. Overall, I really enjoy this mech. I've enjoyed it more than the last few mechs that I've tried. I know I just reviewed that Atoll X mech mod from Rock Vape. Solid mech, I think I like this one more. I also did that Russian, uh, the Katana mech mod, also a solid mech, also I like this one more. Now if I'm gonna give you my final thoughts, I'm gonna say this. Stan Tenacious TX Vapes is a man that knows his mech mods. He's released a few and they've all been pretty stellar. He's become like the vape community mech mod guy. When I heard he was releasing a new mech, I thought, well, it's gonna be good. It's, it's just gonna be good. Stan knows his mechs. He knows what makes a good mech, he knows what makes a good switch, and both of those things are present in the heavy hitter. And not to beat a dead horse, but this little quick release button on the bottom, that's some innovation that I've not seen in mech mods before. Even that little platform locking mechanism is innovation that I haven't seen in a mech mod before. Now, if we're gonna play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take everything I have, I got nothing left to vape, is the heavy hitter a mech mod that I'm gonna seek out and buy like right away? Here's the thing, probably. I like it more than that Katana. I like it more than that Atoll X. If I wanted a tube mech mod, this would be the tube mech mod that I would wanna buy. Now, being completely honest, if I wanna get a mech mod that's, that's, that's a mech mod simply for being a mechanical mod, I still love that Mike Vapes clutch mech mod. It's not a tube, it's more of a box, but it's a mech box that I truly, truly love. But as far as tubes go, I, I think this is the gold standard right here from Stan and Heavy Metal Vapor as far as like a tube mech mod goes. At least for me, maybe right, I know, you know, I know Kennedy, Steve the Machinist, I know Kennedy makes great mech mods. Is this better than a Kennedy? I mean, it's, Different than a Kennedy. I know there's a lot of good mech mod companies out there. You know, Rogue and Purge. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the Purge mech mods. Take it for what it's worth. Ultimately, the decision's gonna be yours to make. But yeah, it is what it is. Heavy hitter, mech mod, Stantanaceous TX Vapes, heavy metal vapor. I think they killed it. And if you're in the market for a new mech mod, I would take a serious look, serious look at the heavy hitter. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Links aren't allowed in the description anymore because of YouTube, so you're gonna have to use that Google Foo, but thank you. Seriously, so much for watching. And remember, no matter what's in your hand, vaping is still at least 95%.
95% what? 95% less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, let's keep on vaping, you guys. 